before we work on the concept of firm behavior, there's one one quick notice um, I want to make here. So you see this indifference curves over here. There is a gap between them. Let's just crop this indifference curve and work a bit more on on the on the Pareto improvement thing to understand it graphically what it means. And in the next videos, we'll go through the series of firm behavior. So if we have this indifference curves like that, I'm gonna make them a bit bigger to see how the improvement works. Recall that a higher indifference curve for any consumer means an improvement, right? And, and in our case, we saw that Anne can improve her indifference curve, her utility by getting more clothing from Bill. So because Anne's indifference curve was the purple one, she went higher, she went or a, on a higher level while, while Bill still was equally well off. And look how that looks graphically. At this point, at this point on the indifference curve, this intersection over here, we can see that they are they are equally well off. Now, if n moves, if n moves a bit higher, n moves a bit higher, n is better off. So this is indifference curve of n after the trade. So let's call that n two. n is better off because her indifference curve is higher, but Bill is still on the same indifference curve. You see it's the same tangency, the same intersection with the purple line of Bill, where Bill was uh, still equally well off. So he did not get hurt. He's still on the same indifference curve. That's the intuition. And got better. Bill is still okay. The same logic can go for Bill. Bill can make a trade in his advantage while while Anne is not gonna suffer. So Bill could Bill could improve his utility a bit. Bill would go something like that, a bit higher. So that would be the indifference curve of Bill, the second indifference curve of Bill after he increases his utility a bit, and it would intersect the indifference curve of Anne. You see at the green, uh, at the green line, there's still intersection with Anne. So still, N is not worse off, but Bill improved a bit. What do we see? We see that the gap between the difference curve is diminishing, is shrinking, and that's the intuition. Any Pareto improvement shrinks a bit this gap because the gap is showing the room for Pareto improvement, the room for trade. And once we improve every consumer, then we will reach a point of Pareto optimality, Pareto optimal. Why is that? Because there's not gonna be any more room of trade. So if we get to the point if we get to the point of tangency between the difference curves, there's literally no more room that we can make for improvement. Why is that? Because at that point, they value the goods in the same ratio. The, the, the valuation of the goods is going to be the same. There's not going to be any difference in how their utility is affected. Because if re remember, the whole notion of trade is that one person likes a certain good more than the other, and they're willing to exchange. But at this point, since we have the same line tangent to the indifference curves, what's the line tangent to the indifference curves? That shows the MRS. So by definition, the tangency between the indifference curve shows that the MRS of N equals to MRS of Bill. So the willingness to exchange food for clothing is the same for both. None of them prefers something more than the other person. So in that case, by definition, we cannot trade. By definition, we cannot make someone better off without hurting the other person because their valuations are the same. The willingness to exchange are the same. There's no room for improvement. And that's the intuition of the Pareto optimality. And we, we just saw here how that works graphically. If just the formal definition is a bit confusing, don't, uh, don't focus on that, focus on the graph. We can see that by raising the indifference curves on higher level of each consumer, we get to a point where this room for improvement that was before, this gap between the indifference curve is diminishing, is diminishing until it shrinks to the point where we touch them. And that's as much as we can do. That's when we exhaust all the room of improvement. That's our, that's our Pareto optimal point, optimal point. Hope this makes sense. In the next video, we are starting the series on firm behavior.